What's going on guys and welcome back to the Honeystead. So my mom and I just did our, our first firesider workshop, which I'll show you what it ended up looking like. We did two big old jars of fire cider and everyone that came left with their own half gallon size jar of gorgeous fire cider. They also left with an amber colored bottle full of RID fire cider that we had pressed out. We showed them how to do that. And then of course, a little bit of honey. Yeah. So can't have fire cider without honey. No, you can't. And if you guys don't know what fire cider is, I did put up a video. We actually have a few videos of us making our winter moon fire cider. Yeah. We have a few videos. We've got one, maybe two videos at this point of us pressing out our fire cider, um, taking shots of fire cider. <laughs> where sometimes we go like that. Uh, but all in all, I think the workshop was really fun. I, I really do. I think we had a great time. Yep. And we had a couple people that didn't end up making it, so it left us with a little bit of extra ingredients. But that's okay, so we just made some extra fire cider, so we we, we restocked our, our supply. One of the things that we like to do is when we have extra fire cider, Typically, if somebody uh, starts to not feel well or they start getting sick, we kind of end up sharing. Yeah, giving like little care packages of like, here, this is gonna make you feel better. So we always keep a little bit extra on hand. So if you guys don't know what fire cider is, I'll put the video above that talks about exactly what fire cider is. And I gotta give a shout out. Oh. Yeah, I gotta give a shout out to Rosemary Gladstar because mm -hmm. I got turned on to Fire Cider. Through her, uh, yeah, all of her videos. Through something that she did and somebody had made it and we went uh, we went somewhere. We were somewhere and anyway, somebody was giving out so samples good. of so Fire good. Cider and I, I immediately was taken to it and I was like, how do you make it? And the gal at the, at the little, I think it was, it might have been a Homesteaders convention. Probably. I don't know. But Just anyway. Yeah, the uh, the gal that had the booth that was giving out samples of fire cider, she was like, oh, don't thank me, thank Rosemary Gladstar. So putting a shout out out there, thank you, Rosemary, for... Um, just being a great herbalist all yes. around and being an awesome, just an awesome person for yeah. for somebody like us to kind of look up to and, and, and share. Yeah, and share. And that's the one biggest thing that I really love about herbal medicine and I love about what we're doing is it's all about sharing you yes. know then if we're gonna make this thing work we gotta share but we had a couple of ingredients left over and I realized that I'm due to make one thing with a little bit of honey and so mm -hmm. I'll have to do that but before I do that we are starting to kind of organize a little bit more of our of our whole apothecary up here. I want to show you what I ended up doing with our bottles. I really loved the look of, of this style label. And I don't know if you guys can see it. So I got this label machine and I have of course created more work for us in the process, but we want it to look good. And so we're relabeling all of our amber colored bottles like this. This is Shazander Berry, a tincture that we have made. Um, on the back, we are also putting out the date that we made it and how we made it. Um, I did kind of go through this and I realized that we didn't put the scientific names of each plant. So we were kind of going back and forth and like, oh, we could put this on the amber colored bottles, but this is, another thing if you guys are growing your apothecary this is one thing that i will say to do mm -hmm. is when you guys are are putting your labels together do absolutely do put the scientific name down mm -hmm. uh, i know for instance uh, passion flower is one that we grow here quite often if you guys have seen our gorgeous passion flower it, it start well it's more of a fortress yeah, right it's now. building its own building now. It, it's literally <laughs> a fortress. But if you type in passion flower, you're going to see uh, multiple flora. different names. Um, so the scientific name for the medicinal passion flower that you're looking for is the uh, Passiflora incarnata. 
So, or Maypop is the other name. So basically what I'm saying is prepare your apothecary to where you're, you're actually using the scientific name and familiarize yourself with the scientific name. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, I feel like we've gotten a lot of them yeah. down. And a lot of it is just by having conversation about right. the plant and, and talking about the plant as almost as I think the, it's its own identity. Yeah. It's a little, just think it's, it's a little friend. It's a little, it, yeah. Friend. It's like, what can you do? Oh, yep. you can help this. Okay. Yep. You know, like goldenrod, which I'm still completely blown away. We did have a couple people ask. About, I want to make that tincture we, or that We sab. need to make the salve, but we have to wait. It mm -hmm. still is it still is brewing. I'm still cooking. But um, a few people ask, which I'm going to go ahead and just address that right here. The goldenrod as a tea form, uh, that was basically just flower tops and a few leaves. Right. Straight, fresh. You can dry it. You can absolutely hang dry goldenrod as well. Uh, I do know people who dehydrate it. If it were up to me on preservation for goldenrod, obviously the free, my personal is the freeze dryer. But I think do what you absolutely do. You look years and years and years. Herbs were hung. They were twisted together and hung. Yeah, hung in the rafters of buildings or your house or over top fireplaces. They, so they were hung. Then drying. You know, you can lay it out on a screen and let the sun dry it. And, you, and then, of course, technology has come in and, and you have a dehydrator. You can dehydrate your herbs. Right. Me, personally, I want to harness the goodness of the plant. I do prefer the freeze dryer. Uh, I, I very much like that. But I also hang dry as well. Right. So basically, when it comes to preserving herbs your way do what works for you i i i know not everybody has a, a freeze dryer i know that it is on people's uh wish list want list planning you know for the future but what i want to share is that if you need to preserve your plant matter now don't wait until you have something to be able to to preserve the plant you have the opportunity to preserve it now, and it's as simple as, as hang drying. Now, I will show you our our uh, hang drying. Do I have some golden rod in there? I don't, we have yarrow, I have yarrow. So this little, this little body came from uh, Amazon, actually. And it is a hang drying little kind of contraption. What I like about it is um, space-wise, look, if I need to, ah, I can store it like that. We typically get this thing loaded up. And so right now I know, I know I have a pitiful amount of passion flower um, in here and then a couple of peach leaves, which I, I think I ended up putting some in a jar uh, or we had some as a tea. Yarrow is another plant, this uh, very lovely. And even though this was air dried, look, you know, it, it still held out pretty good. The coloring of the green didn't hold out as much uh, to, to if I were to go ahead and versus like freeze drying it. However, this I think was under $40 on Amazon. And we kind of have it tucked away in the closet portion of the apothecary. I do have that on my Amazon storefront. So if anyone is interested, I can kind of share that link down below. Um, so you guys can see the exact one, but I love the fact that it holds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, has eight sections that you can really load up uh, with the same plant matter and just load it up, you know, go out, forage, see what's ready, but don't stop yourself from preserving the plants because you don't have something like that. Do you wanna help me pull some of the jars down and we can get better organized? Sure. And then after we get this done, I gotta show them what I wanna do with a little bit of honey and some ginger. So these are some of our, our original labels <laughs> we had you know, old, just regular canning labels. Honestly, I love these because they're so easy to remove. 
Then we went for uh, the white labels. And I, um, like it. I, I mean, I like it. It well, just, it doesn't give me the look that I want. And then they did kind of start falling off. So then we had to kind of tape over top of them. And I'm like, I mean, it's not bad, but it's not, it's not pretty. It's not the look that we This is for. pretty. This is very pretty. I also, while we're talking about labels, a lot of people do ask where we get our labels from. Um, and I buy them in bulk. Honestly, I think I got them out from Amazon as well. They do work very nicely. However, uh, when you are using your jars, make sure that your label stays on. I do plan on taking those canning labels and putting them underneath uh, just to have another form of plant. I, most of them I do know. You know, I, I can tell the difference between turmeric and galangal. Um, burdock root. This is some that I actually freeze dried. Yeah, but in a tincture, you can't tell what it is. No, in a tincture, you can't. And so otherwise, identify all these little amber leaves. <laughs> it's like, let's taste them all. And then all of a sudden, we're like, woo, here we go. Um, so, you know, just when you're growing your apothecary, you know, just take all of that into consideration. Like this, uh, this came from our tree. We have a little kaffir lime tree. Absolutely love um love the smell love the taste i mean it's amazing i use this for cooking actually has a lot of medicinal properties as well um and it just tastes very to me it's like a creamy tropical i don't know it's just it's like a coconut creamy tropicalness and it's very good in a tea but if you're it does it it does taste really good with pineapple and coconut and yeah and coconut and curry that's my favorite. We use it for curry. The other thing that you might want to add on your labels is the source. So like this girl right here. We have the goldenrod that we harvested the other day. Wildcrafted when we harvested the month of September when we harvest and then how it's been preserved. That I think is very helpful. One, because if we have some that is uh, just air dried, it'll also show the difference between um, the plant matter so we can kind of compare now it has been raining for the last it feels like 40 days and 40 nights <laughs> I'm waiting for an arc to come and pick me up um, but you know this is I think the remnants I don't think it's considered a hurricane anymore I think it's a tropical storm but where we're located we are getting the bands of Ian um, from the hurricane and it has been rainy what? and and muddy and messy um so we've been stuck oh darn we have been stuck up in the apothecary oh snap. Oh, snow so bad so with nothing to oh, do right so much to do <laughs> so i figured this would be a good opportunity to kind of get organized we are also getting ready for our our workshop, our beekeeping workshop up here, fingers crossed. We're gonna have a beautiful, beautiful day. The weather is gonna be perfect, um, but that's the Homesteaders of America conference. As soon as it's done raining, I am probably gonna go pick a bunch of goldenrod and we can air dry it so that you can kind of see the difference between oh, the two. That's a great idea. And well, we can end on it anyways. Yeah, but then that way we can do a container with air dried and you can see the difference yeah. between freeze dried and air dried. Yep. put all of our gorgeous little amber colored bottles that are now nicely labeled. These are all tinctures. We still have a good bit that we have to press off. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, but it's okay. I 
talked about all the medicinal properties of honey and how good it is for for you uh, to basically all the goodness that it can do. I mean, it's more than just a sweetener that you can add to a tea, uh, but some of the fun things that you can do with honey other than adding them to a tea is fermenting. Now, I have very much enjoyed all the different types of, of foods that you can ferment in honey. Garlic is one of them. I do need to do a video on that and I plan mm -hmm. on that because we have a little bit extra that we set aside to be mm. able to kind of fill because especially since we're going into cold and flu season. So we set aside a little bit of honey that we could uh, ferment some other things that we very much have enjoyed and one of them is fermenting. A fresh ginger root if you have never seen one and what I have done is I took the liberty of going ahead and cutting it into thin slices trying to expose a lot of the the ginger itself and also too uh, we we like this size because if we go to utilize this in cooking cooking or if we want to make tea with it you can see you can certainly there's several ways you can cut it i wouldn't recommend throwing this in a jar i would recommend cutting it up um as thin or as whatever size you desire. The reason why, the reason why you wanna cut up or release the moisture that is in the plant matter. So whether you're using, whether you're fermenting garlic in your honey or you're fermenting your, your ginger in your honey, the thing is, is most honey consists of 18% uh, moisture. Right. So if you add moisture to your honey, that's when that fermentation process actually starts to begin. By adding ginger into it, we are gonna alter the moisture content. I'm not necessarily gonna ruin the, the honey, um, but I'm going to be able to just add a different component into it that we could incorporate into exactly that, cooking, teas, cough, cold. So a lot of people know, like when you get a bellyache, <clears throat> that ginger is good, it, ginger ale is something that is used for a lot of people when you get a bellyache. It's actually considered a very strong anti-inflammatory right. and it's, it is a warming herb, you know, which is why we put it in our fire cider because we're kind of warming up. But the other thing that I thought was pretty interesting is that it has like 12 different um, antioxidant properties in wow. it. So, you know, this little root has so much to offer and just pairing it with honey, especially if you have an upset stomach, adding a little ginger is uh, also considered a uh, carminative as well. And going back to the honey and talking about how essentially the honey has every bit of consistency in it that your body is needing right. when you're sick and you're dehydrated, it has what your body needs to be able to, to support itself, to, to start feeling better. So one of the other components that ginger has to offer is it has an enzyme called bromelain, which is also found in pineapple. And it is actually equivalent in use as far as ginger to pineapple. So, Which is good to know because there's a lot of people who can't, do the pineapple. They can't eat pineapple because they break out. Um, which I, we are due again. We need to do this. I pineapple have, tea. Now our pineapple tea, which is it's basically bromelain tea, which is like an anti-inflammatory. And oh, I so did good. do that video. We'll put that up. But oh my gosh, that was amazing. It was like better than apple cider, it like hot malt cider. So it was so good. delicious. But for people who, yeah, you're right. For people who who can't have the pineapple, I mean, this is an option to to be able to have. But anti-inflammatory, super warming, great for your immune system, and we are just pairing it with some of the best rich goodness that we possibly can. So, let's start making it. Cut this up to try to expose it, but yet leave it big enough for us to be able to do other things with it as well. Which, if you are into stir frying or cooking, take some of this ginger as well, because it's very, it just has this overall sweet, you know, rich flavor. The other thing that you can do with this is um, after you're done with it, if you just want to do a little bit of like lemon water, make like a lemon tea, like a hot tea with just a little bit of lemon juice, adding this in with the lemon water actually tastes 
quite amazing. It's delicious. We're gonna use about a half of a quart of, of chopped up ginger. And this is some of our honey, which is gorgeous. And you wanna go above it to make sure that it's all equally covered. Do you wanna um, poke to be able to move it around a little bit? Yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing it. We have found chopsticks and they are very no. helpful in our apothecary. <laughs> so all I'm doing now is kind of getting all the air bubbles out. We want to. that honey to be able to kind of immerse itself. And this is the fun thing. You can do a lot of different things with your honey. Um, I have infused elderberry mm -hmm. uh, in our honey. That was delicious. That was short lived. We used it up. Yep. Um, I know that you can do echinacea, you can do thyme, you can do sage, you can do rosemary. pretty much every, yeah, rosemary especially. Um, but you know, for a, so a little more honey. for if you're fighting a cold and you just need you just need a little bit of heat, it's kind of sweet heat. You know that ginger is a little bit spicy, and you're gonna feel it. But I don't know about you, but when I'm not feeling good, and I'm actually kind of upset that we didn't already have a batch ready because with this nasty rainy weather, I think I, I would have very much thing. enjoyed something like this to kind of, to warm your body up. Um, do you know, it just, for me, I, I just absolutely, I think, that's good. I think so. So what is going to happen? I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, it's starting to float up a little yeah. bit. So here's the thing that's going to happen. This is the part that you're going to experience next. With the fermentation process, um, if I were to go and seal this up right away, it would essentially, I would have to come in every single day and I would have to burp it. <laughs> burp it is basically just releasing a little bit of the air, the gases that are forming in this in this process. You think that's well? I think so. Okay. But look how pretty. It's gorgeous. So, um, there's a few different things that you can do. If you are very diligent in your time and your schedule, you can seal it up, come here every single day, and just release it. Or you can get a little fermenting lid um, that has a little spout. I do have one. It is somewhere. I don't think it's up here yet. No, it's not I don't up think here it's yet. I gotta up move here. it. Or um, you can just play safe. Uh, and use a little bit of unbleached uh, cheesecloth or uh, muslin cloth and just do one of those so that you don't necessarily have to, to worry about coming up here every single day um, and burping it. Now, storing wise, you, you are gonna store this in a cool area for a little while. You'll start to see it. What will happen is the moisture will eventually start to pull from the ginger it's and your your up. honey is actually going to become more liquidy so it's it's kind of interesting the honey won't go bad it'll just pull a lot of that heat a lot of that that flavor um and so will the ginger the ginger will mm -hmm. definitely taste like it so we'll keep you guys posted on this and in a couple of weeks we'll check back but thank you guys for watching mm -hmm. and as always don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old Bye, guys. Bye.